If you have pain on the outside part of your hip and would love to put a stop to that pain, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the best stretching and strengthening exercises to alleviate that pain in that area. Now, in most cases, pain in this area is caused by a condition known as hip bursitis. A bursa is a fluid-filled sac that decreases friction and increases lubrication in an area where there's a lot of muscles and tendons interacting close with each other. So your hip and your shoulder are probably two of the most common places to develop this condition. When we throw the suffix itis on the end of the word, it simply means an inflammation of the bursa in your hip. Now the pressure on your bursa causing this inflammation is most often the result of tightness and weakness in your hip. Therefore the best way to train it is to do the right stretches to relieve the tightness and the right strengthening exercises to improve function and increase strength, thereby helping your hip to feel better. That's exactly what I want to share with you in this video today. We're gonna start with four great stretches for your hip, follow that up with four great strengthening exercises for your hip, and hopefully by the end of this video, Video, you start to feel a lot better. That said, let's get into it right now. Stretch number one is going to be a supine lateral hip stretch. To perform this stretch, you will need something to help you out. I recommend a belt or a towel or a sheet, a rope, a dog leash, all of those work really great. I have this stretch out strap that I'm going to be using. This is kind of nice just because it's this webbing that has some handles sewn into it. If you're interested in this, there's a link in the description down below. You can pick one up for yourself. But again, any of those other things that I mentioned will work just fine with this stretch. What I want you to do is uh, sit up first and then take your belt, towel, sheet, whatever, and put it right around the end of your foot on the side that's painful. So it's around my left foot. I'm gonna stretch my left hip out with this stretch. Go ahead and lay down on your back. Now what you're going to do is bring your foot up as high as you can comfortably. And what you'll notice here is you're gonna get a really good stretch right here in the back, right in the hamstring. But we can do one better to target the outside part of that hip. What I'm going to do now, right now my left foot is coming straight up to my left shoulder. I'm now going to take my left foot and I'm gonna pull it over here towards my right side. So I'm pulling my left foot away from you, away from the camera, over here to the wall on the right side. And what you'll feel with that is just a really great stretch all the way to the back part of kind of this outside hamstring, right up into that bone where that bursitis sits. And so what I would encourage you to do is hold that for about 20 seconds, come out of it, and then we're going to repeat that one three times. The next stretch is going to be a figure four stretch or a piriformis stretch. This is what it looks like. Laying on your back, I'm still gonna stretch my left side out. So cross your left leg over your right knee. Now in this position, I'm gonna take my hands, I'm gonna dive kind of right down here in the figure four, right in the hole created by my legs and grab around the back of my right knee. Now in that position, what I can do is pull that right knee right up into my chest until I get a good deep stretch right here in the left hip, kind of deep in the left hip. That piriformis muscle is one of your deep hip rotators, sits underneath your glute max muscle. That's where you should be feeling it. So again, just kind of a, a stretch right deep in the hip. Same parameters on this one. You're gonna hold that for 20 seconds and you're gonna repeat that one three times. The next stretch, this is actually one of my favorite for the IT band, which is a, a large structure laterally, sits on the outside part of your quad, outside part of your thigh, but also super great with this hip bursitis condition. What you're gonna do is lay on your side opposite your pain. And so I'm gonna lay on my left side, and if my pain were in my right hip, this would be the setup for that. So your painful hip should be up. Now in this position, I'm gonna take my right hand, bend my right knee, and grab my right ankle. And with this, you're gonna get a good stretch to your quad, you're gonna feel that right here in this muscle right here. But what we can do is actually sneak that to kind of the top lateral part of the hip. If I use my left foot and hook my knee, so here's my left foot, it's gonna to go to the outside of my right knee, now use my left heel to push my knee down towards the table. So you're in this kind of quad stretch position, but then you're gonna use the other leg to pull the knee down towards the floor. What that does is introduces this adduction. So now my knee is caving in and you're gonna get a really good stretch on the outside part of your hip. And so again, same parameters apply on that one. Hold for 20 seconds. 
and repeat that one three times. The last stretch, stretch number four that I like to give people is going to be for the hip flexors. And so what I want you to do is kneel down and then with your painful side, so in this example, we'll say it's the right side, I'm going to get in this lunge position on my left foot. Now in this position, I wanna stay up nice and tall, don't round forward, stay up nice and tall, and then scoot your hips forward, pull your hips forward to put more weight onto that front foot. And what you wanna do is go until we just get a really good stretch right here through the front part of the hip, right through the hip flexors. The other thing that you can do is actually contract this glute on the right side. So if you contract that glute, that's gonna keep your hips in a better position to actually stretch out that, um, that iliopsoas muscle or that hip flexor muscle. So flex the glute, lean forward, take it to where it's a comfortable position. You feel a good stretch right here through the front of your hip. You're gonna hold it 20 seconds and you're gonna repeat that one three times. Now, if you've been following along doing the stretches so far, your hips should be feeling pretty good. We've got them stretched out, we've got them loosened up. If that's the case, hey, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're feeling, I love to hear from you guys. But what we need to do now is follow that up with some strengthening exercises so that the pain doesn't come back. Strong hips or healthy hips, these are the exercises that we're going to use to get to that point. So let's see, exercise number one is going to be for your glute muscles. So your hip extensors in the back. This is going to be a glute bridge. Laying on your back with your knees bent, I want you to contract your glutes. So squeeze your butt. That's the first step in this position. Hold that contraction and use that to lift your hips up towards the ceiling. We're going to hold that for about a three second count and then slowly return right back down to the starting position. If you feel like you can do a little bit more, you can hold up in this position for a little bit longer is a great way to progress this. I also like to add marches. So squeeze your butt, lift your hips, hold that position as now we're going to alternate marching left, right, left, right, and then return back down to the starting position. On this one, three sets of about 15 to 20 reps is a great number to shoot for. The next exercise is going to be some clamshells. This is going to work your deep hip rotators. You're going to lay on your side with your affected hip up. So if my right hip were painful, I'm laying on my left side right now. Uh, let's see, knees are bent and my feet are together. Your feet stay together throughout this exercise. What you can do now is just, again, engage those deep hip rotators to pull my right knee up towards the ceiling up till I can't pull it up anymore. Should feel a good deep contraction here in the right hip. Hold one, two, three, then slowly return right back down to that starting position. Up and hold, one, two, three. Really good contraction right here in the back side of the hip. This is weak on a lot of people, so it's not uncommon to really feel that contraction and then return back down. Same numbers apply here, 15 to 20 reps repeated three times. Our next exercise is going to be for the lateral hip or the hip abductors. I'm gonna stay in this position, but now I'm just going to straighten my right leg out. Now in this position, I wanna keep my leg nice and straight, keep my toe down and pull my heel up towards the ceiling and back behind me slightly, and then return right back down to that starting position. So pulling the heel up and back, you're gonna feel that right here on the lateral part of your hip more towards the back. The common mistake that I see on this is people will let their hip roll backwards and they'll lead with their toe. They turn that into a hip flexor exercise. So keep that whole system closed down. Keep your hips stacked, pull the heel back behind you, and then with same parameters apply on this. Let's try to repeat that one 15 to 20 times and then do that for three sets. Now on this one, if that feels okay, I always like to keep things even. I have patients roll over onto the other side and repeat those same sets and reps on the other side as well. Now for this last exercise, we're gonna progress things up off of the floor. We're gonna stand, we're gonna make things a little more functional. It's crucial that you do that. These are going to be some side squats. What we're going to do, so start with your feet relatively close together. You're going to take a step to one side and make sure the step is big enough that you're a little bit wider than shoulder width with your feet. In that position, we're gonna drop down into a squat, just as low as you can go, as low as your strength and range of motion will allow you to go, and then pull yourself up out of it. It's not just straight up though, it's up and over to the side that you took the step. And now we're ready for our next rep. So we're gonna step laterally, drop down into a squat, pull ourselves up and to the side, and then repeat that with just as much room as you have. And then obviously we're going to go back and repeat this the other direction as well. 
A squat is one of the best exercises that you can do functionally. We're always getting up and down and from seated to standing and things like that. And so it's very important that we train those muscles. When we kick on the lateral motion, that's going to add those abductor and adductor motions. And so the, the lateral muscles and the inside muscles are going to be trained a little more as you do them from side to side. What I recommend is about 10 reps to the right and 10 reps to the left, and you can repeat that three times. Now, if you don't have enough room to take multiple steps in either direction, what you can do is one rep over here to the right and then one rep over here to the left. Repeat that 10 times each direction, and then we're gonna do three sets of that motion. Now, if you like this video, if you'd like to see more from Tone and Titan, click the circle right here to subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you back for future videos. For some reason, YouTube thinks you might like this one from Tone and Titan. Check that out, see if YouTube's right. Until then, I hope these helped. I hope you feel better. We'll see you again soon right here on Tone and Titan.